Yo, what's up guys? Tanmay for Simple Snippets and welcome back to a new video tutorial on Java programming. So today's topic is going to be on recursion in Java and what are recursive methods and we'll also see a program example. So we'll cover both theory as well as programming. So make sure you watch this video till the end if you want to cover both the topics or both the subtopics. So yeah, with that being said, let's start off with a little bit of theory on what is recursion and what are recursive methods in Java. So if you are coming from a C++ background and if you have watched my C++ video playlist, then you probably must have gone through the recursive functions video tutorial. So we've extensively covered what are recursive functions in C++. So similar concept is applied over here as well. And if you're new on this channel, make sure you subscribe guys, because I have a lot of video tutorials on information technology oriented subjects. And yeah, with that being said, let's first go through a little bit of theory on today's topic. So open up your browser and go to our official website that is simplesnippers.tech and you can go under the courses. In the core Java part, you'll find this article that is recursion and recursive methods in Java programming. Or what I'll do is I'll just drop this link in the video description, which will directly take you to this article. So this is our official website. So starting off with little bit of theory. So recursion in Java is a process in which a method calls itself continuously. Okay. In simple terms, a method is calling itself again and again. So until a particular condition is met. Okay. Otherwise it would be going into an infinite loop and we'll see that in a minute as well. So using recursive algorithms or recursive calls, certain problems can be solved quite easily. So example of such problems are tower of Hanoi, in order, pre order, post order, tree traversal. So these are all data structures concepts. And these are probably a little complex topics, which we haven't yet covered. So we'll see them in future tutorials. But then ultimately the idea here is that the method will keep calling itself until a particular condition is met. Okay. That's the idea of recursion. Recursion means recursively or repeatedly calling the method again and again. So how does it work in Java? So if you've seen the C++ video and if you are coming from a C++ background, then it is pretty much the same. And the concept is exactly how it works in C++. So here you can see in the image, we have our main function. You can see public static void main. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So in the main method, we have called our recursive method. So this is a normal call. So this is a function call or method call, right? So this gives a method call to the body of the method where the method is defined and declared. However, in that method, you can see these dot dot represent some other statements which are carrying out some task. And then in between, we also have one more recursive method, which is calling the same method, right? So you can see the red arrow, which points to the same method. So this is what a recursive function looks like, which has a function call or method call inside the same method. So when I say function, I mean method, right? Okay. So in Java, we call method and in C++, we call them as functions. So they are the same basically. Now, how does it work? So in the pro above program, I pretty much explained you the working. You can read out this article. You can pause this video. So and yeah, as I mentioned, this recursive method or this recursive behavior needs to stop at some point, right? Otherwise it would keep calling itself and this would cause an infinite loop condition. So that's why to prevent that we generally use a if else statement or some similar approach wherein some condition becomes false and then the repeated method calling stops. So now what we'll do is we'll jump to a program example. So if you scroll down in this article, we already have that example. You can go through that as well. However, what we'll do is we'll type it ourselves and code it in the NetBeans ID. So that that gives you hands on practice. And I would definitely recommend that you type along with me. And then what we'll do is we'll come back to this theoretical article to see the visual diagram understanding. So this is that visual diagram understanding. You can go through the article and we'll also, of course, I'll try to explain you step by step what is exactly happening. So that will, in that way, you'll be very much clear with how it works behind the scenes. And then we'll talk a little bit about advantages and disadvantages. So yeah, let's jump to the NetBeans ID. Okay. So as you can see, I have opened up my NetBeans ID and I have already created a project. You can do the same. So just code along with me for the best practice. So what we'll do is we are going to create a static method, which is going to calculate the factorial of any number. So I hope you know what a factorial is. So for example, four factorial would be four into three into two into one. Similarly, five factorial would be five into four into three into two into one. Okay. So that's how factorial works. It's a mathematical concept. So for this, we are going to develop a function and this function is going to be recursive. That is, it is repeatedly going to call itself until the final answer is achieved. So you will understand that in a minute. So let's start off with the program. So I'm going to say static int fact. Okay. 
inside that i'm going to expect or i'm going to pass a primitive type integer variable so i'm going to say int n now inside this so by the way i made it static because i don't want to create the object of this class so we can directly call static methods without using the object name right so it's a class level method and we've talked about static methods in another example in this tutorial playlist so i have the entire java playlist and i'll link that also in the video description so you can check it out so yeah what i'm going to do over here is i'm going to say if n not equal to 1 i'm going to say return because our return type is int which means that we have to return an integer value right so i'm going to say return n star fact of n minus 1 semicolon i'll just explain to you let me just write it down or i'm going to say else return 1 okay 1 means the actual number 1 or the value 1 okay so what i did over here is i gave a recursive call so this line is where i'm doing that recursive call and i'll tell you what it means or how it works so what i'm doing is whatever the number is being passed it is first checked whether it is equal to 1 if it is not equal to 1 then i'm going to say that number into factorial of that number minus 1 so if i pass 4 so 4 is not equal to 1 right so i will say 4 into this star means multiplication so 4 into factorial of 4 minus 1 that is 3 so again this function will be called so this time 3 will be passed right you can see 3 is passed so it will be checked inside this function since 3 is not equal to 1 it would return 3 into 2 and then 2 into 1 and then one. at the end we will have 1 so it will be returned so of course we will see the visual representation in a minute but before that let's try to execute this uh, method and let's try to see if this program works so this is our method and there's nothing more to it we are just going to use it in our main method so i'm just going to say system.out.println and i'm just going to hard code the value factorial of 4 is colon and i'm just going to append this value and i'm just going to call the method directly over here fact of 4 that's it okay and since this value or since this method is going to return us an integer value this would be returned and directly appended over here and printed in the output screen okay so i don't need to have a separate variable int a is equal to fact of 4 and then i don't have to like print this a over here okay i can also do that but then that will just waste one line of code right i don't need to do this i can directly call fact over here so i'm just going to do that okay let's try to run this and let's see what our answer is so there you go you can see factorial of 4 is 24 so let's see if this actually is true you know factorial is 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 right so 4 3s are 12 12 2s are 24 right and 24 into 1 would be 24 only so this is our output now what we'll do is let's try to replace this 4 with 5 so factorial of 5 would, should be 120 let's see if our output is also 120 and there you go you can see factorial of 5 is 120 so if you multiply this you'll get the answer of 120 and then you can try out different combinations over here you can take input from user also and then pass it but we are not going to go into that complex part because we are just here to check out the recursive method how it works so now let's jump to the visual representation of this method which we have on the on our article so coming back to our article so this was the exact function that we just typed and we got the output also so now let's see visual diagram to understand the working so this blue box is our main method right here what we did is we said system.out.println factorial of 4 is fact of 4 okay this is what we did over here right so let me just replace this with 4 we passed the value of 4 because our method is expecting an integer value as an argument that's that's what we did so n was 4 so the first time this fact was called so this is that first red box which has the first call inside this it, n was passed 4 so n was checked if n is not equal to 1 n is 4 right so n is not equal to 1 which means that the if block is going to be executed so here we said return 4 into fact of n minus 1 so we gave one recursive call so this is the first recursive call so what happened here is n minus 1 is 3 so this 3 was passed and again one more time this fact method was called right so this is a recursive call so here n is 3 this time again the if block is checked if n not equal to 1 n is 3 which means that n is not equal to 1 so again a recursive call is made so now factorial method is called and in this time n minus 1 would be 3 minus 1. So that would be 2. So n is now become 2. 
and a new method is called so again this recursive call is happening again this if block is checked again n is passed and this time n is 2 so 2 minus 1 is 1 now this is the last recursive call here n is 1 so it is checked if n not equal to 1 but n is 1 right so n is equal to 1 which means that this if block is become false that is now the else block is going to be executed and the else block is very simple it just returns 1 so now this method is the innermost method right so this was the last recursive call so this is going to return 1 to the uppermost or the second last recursive call right so it is going to return this value to the second last recursive call so it is going to re return 1 over here so you can see in yellow i have written the values that are being returned okay so it says returns 1 so 1 is returned over here so in place of this fact n minus 1 the actual number 1 is replaced okay now what is n over here n is 2 so 2 into 1 right so this is what we are returning to one level above so you can see in yellow return 2 into 1 which is 2 right so this 2 is returned over here in this method now this 2 is multiplied with the n of this level and at this level n is 3 so 3 into 2 which is equal to 6 now this 6 is returned over here at the very first recursive call so this is replaced over here which is 6 and n at this level is 4 so 4 into 6 will give you 24 and lastly this 24 is returned at the very first in the main method where the fact was called first time so directly 24 is returned over here and is printed factorial of 4 is 24 so i hope now you have a visual representation of how this recursive call is happening and how the values go decreasing over here one step at, at a time and then while we return it it just get multiplied and it comes as the final output in the main method okay now if you say 5 there would be one more recursive call over here till the value of n becomes 1 right so there would be one more level over here but the return procedure is going to be the same it's going to get multiplied and returned back one level above so this was the basic working of a recursive method and this is what happens behind the scenes now talking about the little bit of advantages and disadvantages of recursive methods and recursions so the main advantage of recursion is that for problems like tree traversal which is sort of like a data data structures concept the algorithm becomes easier and more elegant okay so just by using one line the traversal automatically happens and you don't have to type it all the time and it looks pretty what we say neat and clean now the disadvantage here is that since multiple recursive calls are made new storage locations for variables are allocated on the stack right more and more function calls are made so this makes the program more slow and a little bit more on the memory side so generally it uses more memory and they execute a little bit slowly depending upon how many number of calls are being made so say for example you're calculating the factorial of 100 so 100 times the recursive call is going to be made right till n value becomes 1 so that becomes a lot and it becomes a little tedious for the program to calculate however recursion is used a lot of times in tree traversals and data structures oriented algorithms where multiple calls are to be made depending upon some condition so yeah this was a little bit about recursive methods and recursion in general in java programming i hope you understood this concept we saw the theory as well as the behind the scenes working we also saw a practical example you can check out this article if you're preparing for your answers you can draw this diagram and explain how recursive methods work so make sure you check out this article and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section also, if you have any doubts, you can put them in the comments. I would make sure to reply to most of you as I always do. And yeah, if you're new on this channel, guys, subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of video tutorials and more are coming soon. So turn on the notifications and you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video tutorial or any other information technology oriented video. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.